Welcome back everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for coming back. Thanks a lot for all the great comments on the last couple projects and videos I posted. Uh, it's good to be back. Um, I'm really thankful for all of you that have stuck with me through the dry spell here. Um, in keeping with getting some videos posted, uh, I haven't had a lot of time to work on the Byron Hill project yet. Um, so in the meantime though, I was on eBay and I probably shouldn't have been, but I was. And every once in a while, I'll just search out kits. You know, I'll go into the HO section and search out kits and see what pops up. And I've had some really good luck finding just somebody looking to dump a bunch of kits. Sometimes they're estate sales, sometimes it's somebody, too many kits in their collection, don't feel like building them, whatever the case may be. So I guess this is a quick video about two things. One, um, there's a lot of opportunities to get good deals out there. Everybody's complaining about how expensive model railroading is getting. Oh, I can't afford our cars are coming out and they're $30 a piece, $40 a piece. I mean, I think some of the tangent models are upwards of 50. That's ridiculous. I mean, I, I can't swing that. I, you know, I, I've got a few of them, but I've always picked them up um, on deals. But one of the things, there's a plethora, a great plethora of kits out there that people just don't want. Maybe they've had in their collection for years and they don't want to build them, whatever the case may be. So I highly suggest you hop on eBay and look for kits. And I found and built over the Christmas holiday several Walther's kits. Now, they've retooled them and, and they've come out with they're more expensive, ready to run versions of them. But I built a tank car that, you know, it's a modern tank car and, and yeah, some of the details are missing. But for all intents and purposes, for what I paid for it and the time that it took me to build it, well worth it. So what I thought I'd do is show you a few of the kits that I just got. And uh, there's some a little bit more off-brand names, um, for instance, like this McKean Models. Um, you know, they're, I don't, they're I think they're still around. I should probably look into that. Um, but, uh, you know, for instance, this is a, a Conrail boxcar. You know, standard 50 foot, nothing special about it. It's got a lot of molded in parts, um, but then it's uh, inside the kit, it's got some stirrups, it's got um, grab irons, things like that. You know, so, so here's one, for instance. Um, some of my favorite kits have always been these blueprint series. This was this company was bought by Atlas. Um, now I think they're still available in kit form, uh, but originally they came in these blueprint uh, series um, boxes and I actually have two already so this will be my third and this is a CP rail again just a 50 foot box car. But you know great underbody detail um, it's got brake piping um, this this kit actually comes with metal wheel sets as well um, so that's really nice. Uh, good detail on that. No weights. I have to add. Oh no, there's weights in here. Never mind. Never mind. There's weights in here. Um, you know, but a separately applied, applied roof. Um, things like that. So, again, Blueprint Models is another one to look for. This is a company that I believe may have gone out of business. It's uh, E and C Shops, I think it is. Um, and this is a Missouri Pacific. Uh, Milgon. It's the corrugated side. I've always liked these. Just They're kind of unique. They look vented, um, but uh, they're not. Uh, this one isn't as highly detailed, but uh, you know, for the price, you can't complain. And then this was a Walther's 53-foot uh, uh, Thrall gondola. And um, I always like gondolas. Fill them with scrap, put some um, steel coils in them, whatever. You, know, you can put everything in these. Some pipe, you know, so you can see here, just a pretty basic gondola. And this has got a lot of molded on details. So, but again, for the price, I paid $14 for all four of those kits. It actually cost almost as much to ship these. Uh, and the gentleman shipped them reasonably. It was priority mail. But so four cars, I have to do some work on them. But ultimately, four cars, even with shipping, that's $25. I'm not good at the maths. But that's a far cry from $25, $30. Now, the quality isn't going to be as good, but when they're rolling around on the layout, I can't tell the difference anyway. Plus, I'm going to weather them up, and that hides a lot of the fine details. So, 
But anyway, so this video is just about, uh, I'm going to go through one of the more difficult kits to build just to show you it's not too bad. Um, you know, just some basic tips and techniques. For those of you who've built them, it'll probably be a refresher, a review, maybe you don't want to watch it. Um, I'll try and keep it as concise and quick as possible though. Just to show you, this kits are well worth it. Well worth it if you can find them. All right. I'm going to get off my soapbox. I'm already 6'3". I'll, I'll step back down and, and stop preaching from, uh, preaching from on high. So, And don't get me wrong. Um, I am all about ready to run as well. They've got a place. Um, and, you know, if that's not your thing, hey, that's the great thing about model railroading. You, you, you build and you do what you like. Um, I just happen to want to be on a budget and need to be within a certain dollar amount and still want to expand my rolling stock. So this is the way I go about doing it. So I have a feeling I pissed a whole lot of people off, but, well, hey, it's my video. <laughs> All right, let's get to building. So the first thing I do when I get a new kit is just uh, take everything out of the package, look over the parts, make sure everything's in, in good shape, uh, make sure you don't have any damaged parts or missing pieces so you don't get halfway through a build and find out, oh, I'm, I'm out of luck. Um, so I just go through and I usually use the, the box itself to sort through everything, evaluate the sprues that came with it. Uh, so here we've got the stirrups and screws and brake piping, um, things like that. So this kit came with uh, two steel nuts um, for weight and uh, inside the box car itself there's uh, two places right above the trucks to place these. So what I'm going to do is before I get too far into it I'm going to just use this Walther's Goo and um, it's a rubber cement type uh, glue in case you've never used it before. So what you want to do is apply it to the nuts themselves and then uh, to the car inside uh, the body. And uh, But before sticking them together I let the glue cure just a little bit and, uh, and then apply them and you get a good tacky uh, bond that way. So here I'm just using a very sharp exacto blade and very carefully cutting out the brake lines from the sprue. And these are very, very fine uh, plastic parts. So you got to be very careful. I'm just gently going back and forth uh, at any of the casting uh, locations and uh, removing it from the sprue. This is probably the most tedious part is these were very, very fragile, very delicate parts uh, and I didn't want to break any of them. So, uh, like I said, a small time consuming, but well worth the effort. In the instructions for this kit, it actually suggested to use the Micromark, um, well, they, they suggested 10X, but now 10X is no longer around, so it's the same stuff, which is ultimately 10X 7R. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use that, and then using a micro brush instead of the larger brush that they uh, provide, uh, the micro brush you can use to get into the smaller locations a little bit easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and dip it, and then apply the glue, and then apply the brake piping. So you just need to go ahead and sometimes open up the holes. Um, once these parts have been painted, the holes are pre-drilled. Uh, so I use the tip of my X-Acto blade to open the holes up a little bit, uh, apply a little bit of the uh, same stuff glue, and then press the uh, brake piping into place. One of the keys to making a good kit is uh, filing off any rough edges from uh, cutting the parts away from the sprues. Uh, so here I'm trimming the uh, walkway uh, boards and um, I think this is the uh, brake wheel itself just to get rid of the flash and, and areas like that. And if you've got the right paint color you can come back later and touch up any marring that you might have done. So here, using a pair of tweezers, I'm applying uh, the walkway braces and um, putting a little bit of the same stuff in the holes first. And then, uh, well, you can't see what I'm doing because my hands are in the way, um, but uh, I plop each one in place. There were four of them and uh, continue on to the next one. So with everything glued to the underbody uh, frame, I'm going to go ahead and apply that to the car itself. So I'm just putting some same stuff to soften up these areas 
and uh, then quickly trying to glue this in place before the glue evaporates. It's the one downside of working with same stuff is it evaporates rather quickly. Uh, one item of note here, um, this is where it pays to read the directions. I was supposed to insert the um, couplers before applying this to the car body itself. Um, not the end of the world, I, I ended up getting around it, but uh, just an FYI, if you're going to build a branch line uh, kit in the future, you need to apply the couplers before you uh, put the undercarriage onto the boxcar itself. This step here might seem a little bit of a cart before the horse. Why am I applying the uh, trucks already? Well, uh, when you start working on the brake piping and some of the underbody details, you need to protect them. And uh, as you're flipping the car over, you don't want it resting on the parts that you just applied. Uh, so the easiest way to do this is just to uh, screw on the trucks themselves and you don't have to snug them into place just to get them there so they're there to support the car instead of sitting on the underbody itself. So this kit came with uh, individual wire uh, grab irons uh, for all four corners of the boxcar. So on the uh, small baggie above the boxcar there I have applied a little bit of super glue and I'm dipping the ends just lightly into it and then applying the uh, stirrup or the grab iron rather to the pre-drilled holes uh, in the boxcar itself. Yeah, sorry my fingers are kind of blocking what I'm doing here but you just kind of work your way in with the tweezers and then let them sit. You only need a little bit of glue. Um, they'll, they'll hold in place pretty well. Uh, you don't have to glop it on. So, so I bought a package of KD uh, number 58 couplers uh, a while back and I just keep them in this old bin. Uh, you can see here I've uh, I found my mistake out and I've corrected it and I got the couplers applied as I wanted to. Um, so uh, I will most likely trim the uh, trip pins off here because uh, these, this boxcar has the uh, air hoses already as a detail part. Uh, the final step of course is to apply the roof and I decided not to glue it on uh, simply because in case I want to add more weight later um, I don't have to worry about the roof being glued on and I can come back and do that. So it just uh, and, and it sits snugly in place so it really doesn't need to be glued on if you don't want to. Well, like I said, this is going to be a little bit quicker, although I don't know, once it's edited, maybe it'll be a little bit longer, but uh, it deviates a little bit from my uh, other project, but uh, I thought I'd share this one. Um, yeah, as you can see, this took me about uh, about an hour. Um, these branch line kits were always a little bit more detailed. Um, you could see there were stirrups and uh, grab irons and walkways and and just all sorts of stuff that you can put on. Now the beauty of these kits, you don't want to put that stuff on. You don't have to. Um, you know, it's just, it's all up to you. Um, if you noticed, I left the roof off, or I, I didn't glue the roof on, just because I'm not sure how the weighting on this is yet. Um, I don't have a scale down here, um, but I would like to just uh, try and get it up to the correct weight. Um, so once the everything is dried, I'll come back and paint the grab irons with a boxcar red. Um, the I'll probably cut the coupler trip pins off the Katie's since these have actual uh, air hoses. So I'll paint the MU hose black. Once that's dry, I'll give it a silver tip to show the fitting. Um, you know, kind of do the same thing on the other side. So again. Um, you know, I highly recommend, if, if you can, you know, an hour's worth of my time. You know, my dad always used to say, it's either time or money. And he was always talking about home improvement. But, uh, you know, you can either pay somebody else to do it, or you can do it yourself. It's time or money. And uh, in, in my case, I guess I'd rather save a few bucks and pick up some kits like this and put them together myself. And, uh, you know, but if... if you don't want to it's not your thing you know not everybody enjoys that so uh, but just an idea I uh, thought I'd throw it past you so thanks again everybody for watching and um, hopefully I'll get back on the uh, Byron Hill project um, the uh, winter lull is is over and I'm back into uh, coaching and and um, all that good stuff so uh, my time is going to be a little bit limited 
uh, but hopefully I'll get some time to shoot some video and stuff like that. So thanks again. We'll see you next time.